how do you make so strong? I guess it can be like pencil pencil means it do it from practice. Actually, yes. Um, I do do a little Pilates, but very much in moderation. Um, basically, most of the, the kinds of exercising that one can do um, with the upper body are actually off limits for violinists because you can bulk up, get a little stiff, and strain yourself. Um, we mostly, you know, exercise on the violin by playing the violin. <laughs> um, so, um, but, you know, obviously we have to do cardio and things like that. But just, you know, we're not supposed to lift, we're not supposed to, you know, whatever, we're not supposed to play tennis. <laughs> but really playing classical violin is very much like an Olympic sport. You know, when I was a um, student from the age of 11 to 17, when I completed my final training, I practiced eight hours every day. Um, and just to get all that, that precision and um, dexterity and, and all of that. And where did you study? Um, in Chicago, um, when I went on to my uh, main professors when I was nine, um, uh, I studied at what was then called the Music Center of North Shore, now it's the Music Institute of Chicago, of course, in Winnetka. We kind of had a long schlep up there from the city every week, actually twice a week, once for lessons, once for chamber music. Um, and then I also did some finishing training in Berlin with a professor who was actually a student of a student of Joachim. So when I was play the Brahms concerto in my lesson, he would say, well, my teacher said that Joachim said that Brahms said to play it like this. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference uh, in the two bows? How do you feel that each one is different? You know, if you bring the other bow back, I will do a quick demo, and you'll see it. Exactly what I'm talking about. That's a good question. Um, <laughs> she said it. Yeah, it's a setup. <laughs> okay, so here is um, B minor bourre of Bach uh, with the Baroque bow. And you can see that it rolls the chords very naturally. It has kind of a, a dancey feel to it. <laughs>
playing for each other, and that's always very valuable. Um, my husband, though, has such an amazing musical ear. You know, I'll come off stage, and everybody else in the audience will be like, oh, that sounded fabulous, blah, blah, blah. And Greg will say, you know, there was that one passage. <laughs> so he keeps me honest. <laughs> yes? Do you have visions of going any further, being a composer, or conductor, or Oh gosh. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? I've not been bitten by the baton bug, <laughs> though I do love leading chamber orchestras without conductor, but leading from the violin, and that's a lot of fun. Um, actually, I, I did have a, a new adventure in music. Um, pretty recently, I learned how to play the viola de more, which is a seven string cousin of the violin with seven playing strings and seven resonating strings, um, two um, to all kinds of different intervals than the, than the violin's fifth. That was pretty wild to figure out where to put my bow on all those seven strings and get used to that. Um, so there's, there's always new horizons, and that's the fun thing about playing music. As opposed to sports, where I would be starting my decline right about now. Um, <laughs> music, you can, you know, if you if you always strive for improvement, you can be better at age 50 than you were at age 40, and better at age 40 than you were at age 30. And there's, you know, always new music to be learned. Um, actually, when I was about 16, I had finished all the standard violin concertos and the, you know, sort of the A list and the B list, and I was thinking, what am I going to learn next? And I went to the library and got this book called String Music in Print or something like that. It was this huge volume of all the music for violin that had ever been written in. And I very excitedly started writing down different titles, and then it hit me all of a sudden that if I lived to be 100 and never ate and never slept, I could still not learn every piece in this book. It wasn't possible. And I thought, oh my god, I'm going to die and someday and I will have not played some pieces written for the violin. This is a tragedy. <laughs> I said, all of us have to, you know, come back and, and learn the others next lifetime. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there's so much music to be learned. And, and even the pieces that I play over and over again, like the Tchaikovsky Concerto or the Mendelssohn Concerto, there's always more to be discovered about those pieces. Um, playing with different colleagues, different conductors, um, different chamber musicians. Um, there's, you know, you, you, you're learning constantly, and that's, that's the, the great fun of it. <laughs>